Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. You know, what we are doing here today is very important. It's very empowering. And it's really needed. Now, I know that some of you already know about the two laws of the life that we had this morning. And we pray, God, that we might be received in a positive way, that they may understand that uh, this community uh, and this city is in trouble, that we need all of us to come together as I think it would be good if we could get a uh, shot with Pastor Johnson if he comes out anytime soon, given what, you know, what happened last night right here on the sidewalk. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh! Dr. Johnson! Dr. Johnson! Do you have a minute? Sure, have a minute? sure, sure. Okay, um, I'm Kelly Barksdale with W4 News. Uh, we want to get your opinion on the particularly brutal murder that happened last night. I understand, although the yellow tape is gone, it was right here along this sidewalk. What do you know about the 29-year-old man who was killed last night? Uh, I don't know much other than the fact that uh, uh, it was brutal, as you say, and um, our church is doing whatever it can for the community to uh, uh, make it work. Our sources are saying two things. First, the young man was stabbed first and then shot. And that makes that crime more brutal than the homicide that occurred uh, a day or so ago. And secondly, um, this has been rumored to be some type of gang turf war. Your thoughts on that, Reverend Dr. Johnson? It, it is getting worse. Uh, but the Bible says that uh, it will get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. So uh, going with that, uh, we are going to do all that we can to uh, keep this thing under, uh, not under wraps, but to keep this thing within the community and don't let it spread any further. And we're going to do all we can as far as counseling and uh, comfort to uh, put everyone at ease. Once this homicide occurred, it makes it four for the week. What are you doing to um, give the community a sense of closure or healing? Well, uh, I, I've been here for 15 years and uh, but, but I think it's important to point out that uh, this building here serves as a mission in our ministry. Uh, we have over 500 active members that, 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 that attend services outside of the city. Uh, but let me be the first to say that uh, our ministry uh, has not done all it could to, to help this troubled neighborhood. And that burden rests squarely on my shoulders. So what you're saying is there is something specific that you could do, perhaps a vigil or a community gathering, to help the community heal about this uh, terribly brutal recent Well, yeah, yeah. There are several things uh, that we have in place uh, to to help this community. But, uh, but again, let me let me say, uh, uh, I'm not suggesting that we could have done anything to stop what happened last night. Let me make that perfectly clear. Uh, but we do have several programs uh, ready to impact this community directly. And what are those? Please elaborate for our viewers, Dr. Johnson. Well, there are, how much time do I have? Because um, about a minute or two. Uh, well, there are two things specifically. First, we're going to uh, move all of our money uh, out of the local bank and into the community credit union, all of it. And that means we'll have an effective voice in the community and, and on how the bank invests in the economic revitalization of this neighborhood. And of course that means jobs. And more, the more jobs there are, the less these young men will be on the streets without nothing to do. And secondly, uh, we are going to invest in this community not only with our monies, but with our time and with our efforts. Uh, because this is where our church began. Right here is where we had our humble beginnings. Now, this community will only begin healing when the people know that there is someone out there who cares about their men, their women, and their children, and their young boys, and their young girls. And that's all the time we have. And if you have any information about last night's brutal homicide or any other crime that has occurred in the city of Hartford, you are urged to contact the police department's anonymous tip line at 1-800-WITNESS. This is W4 News reporter Kelly Barksdale reporting live via Skype in the city's north end for accesstv.org.
Good morning. Good morning. Late. Uh, Thursday. We had a shooting out here. Man got shot three times. You know anything about? It? They say that the man was shot three times. Yep. But I didn't hear anything. And the night before? The only thing I can remember is seeing the police and the ambulance service on the bottom church. Somebody got shot again out here. Young kid, 19 years old. Nothing at all. You can tell me anything at all. Nothing. We interviewed, we taped off the area, interviewed a number of people, and they said they didn't see anything. And uh, this is, uh, I don't want this to be a cold case. I want this to, to move forward. Anybody at all, anyone you think can, was out here that saw anything that can actually help us put this case or the other case to a closure, where we can actually identify a perpetrator. Now that I remember, okay. my neighbor came home about the same time the police car started coming. Right. It's possible that she saw something. Who's this now? Shay. Shay Smith. She lives on the second floor in apartment B5. What street? Up here on Vine Street. Vine Street. Okay. Uh, you know what time she'll be there? She's there now, do you know? Well, she's at work right now, but she picks up her children up the street at the school. You said, she, you said Shea Smith? Yes. Apartment B5? Yes. Okay, I'll stop back in. I'll stop back. All right. You yes. have a nice day. Thank you. You, you too. All right. Two types of people. Trained and untrained. Others. Professional and unprofessional. How you use it? Good, better, best. Never let it rest till our good is better and our better is our best. Funga, la fia, a te, a te. Funga, la fia, a te, a te. I am somebody. I am beauty. I am the motherland. I am Africa. And I Why not? I want to stay in play. We gotta go home, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Get your book bags. What time is my mother coming home? She said that she was gonna she was gonna take us out to a hometown buffet. Hometown buffet? What's the special occasion? My brother and I did so well in our report cards yesterday that she said. She will take us to your hometown right after school. Why are you here instead of mommy? But don't worry, your mom is on her way home now. She had a special project that she had to stay over and complete for her boss. So she gave me a call and asked that I pick you guys up from the school. I'm scared. Yes, dear. I'm scared. I'm scared of what? I'm scared of being shot like that man. Don't worry, I'll shoot anyone who bothers you. I won't let anyone hurt my little sister. Now look, you don't have to be afraid of somebody shooting you. 
And you, young man, you just don't go around shooting people. There are better ways to protect your sister than shooting. See, now it takes courage, honey, to stand up for what you believe in, to fight for what is right, to risk your life, sacrifice, to walk by faith and not fear, to protect lives that are so dear. But to sit and do nothing, you remain part of the problem and not part of the solution. The evil persists, the wrong keeps going on, more lives will die. And why? Because you don't want to be called a snitch, a witch. You think you'll die simply because you provide a tip? How ludicrous. See, now it takes courage, honey, to stand up for what you believe in, to fight for what is right, to risk your life, sacrifice, to walk by faith and not fear, to protect lives that are so dear. Don't worry about a label of a snitch, a witch. See, now it takes courage, honey, to be a good snitch.